everyone, we so, won. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it'd be fun to share uh, our story with you, how we met, how we ended up getting married, and everything in between. We'll start with, I guess, how we met would be the first part. So we did meet online on a dating website. As you do nowadays. <laughs> Online is the modern day Cupid, you know, it's just <laughs> kind of where you go. I'll have to kind of tell my backstory about it a little bit. I had actually just gotten out of a not really great relationship. Uh, I was sort of emotionally abusive, it wasn't really the best. I had just signed up for the dating website. Legitimately, no one believes me, but this is the truth. Just for fun, I just wanted to see what kind of people were online dating. Uh, I didn't go on any dates or really talk to anybody on there at all. So I think it was that you had to pay for a monthly fee in order to actually send private messages. Otherwise you could just wink at somebody or send like yeah. a smiley face. And then one day Trevor sent me one and I looked at his profile and I was like, whoa, this guy seems really cool. Like, why is he on dating website? He doesn't <laughs> seem like he would need to go online to find somebody. He seemed Thank like you. a total catch. But he was in Vancouver, BC, and I lived in Portland, Oregon. If you guys are familiar with the geography, probably roughly six hours of driving apart, mm -hmm. 300 miles, give or take. So a bit of a ways, a little bit outside of yeah, my... Yeah, uh, not too bad, but yeah. definitely the long distance. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, your 20 mile radius that would be a typical place you'd look. Nonetheless, I it just felt like I really needed to talk to this guy, but I was a college student. I was really poor. This is back in 2013. I couldn't afford $30 a month to send a private message. It was. That much, but it was. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, why did you message me? Um, How did you find me, first of all? I was just searching for people in like, you know, a certain radius, and then there just wasn't anybody around, so I just kind of further expanded the radius, and you were the first one that popped up. I thought you were really cute, so I was like, there you go, send a message. <laughs> uh, I couldn't, mess so he sent me a message, a few messages, and I couldn't respond uh, to him, so I got a little bit sneaky, as you do, and it's amazing how <laughs> creepy <laughs> <laughs> you can be. <laughs> When you want to find somebody. So I, I tried to go to his profile and I saw I knew he was in Vancouver, BC because he was a smart person, didn't put his full name on, you know, on his dating profile. He didn't say any kind of personal information that it would divulge who he is. And so he did say one thing though, he did say that he attended a church here in Vancouver, BC, and he had put the name that he played on the worship team on that church. Stalker. <laughs> and so I went to Facebook and I tried to find uh, this this church's page. And I did, and then I was like, okay, well, you know, if he plays on the worship team, he's probably friends with the pastor of the church on Facebook. So I found the pastor of the church, went to his friends list, I searched for anybody named Trevor, because I knew his name was Trevor. That's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold, I found a profile that looked similar to the one online. Stick the dog. No. And so I sent him a message on Facebook and I, I did the first thing I said was hey I know this is probably really creepy <laughs> But I just really had to talk to you. So I sent him a long message. Luckily he responded <laughs> I debated it <laughs> And uh, we just started chatting. We just kind of hit it off over our mutual tastes in life and the things we want to do yeah. I think one of the turning points for me was when I told him, you know, I don't really like the sun, I don't like hot weather. I like, you know, cloudy, cold days and, you know, sweaters and snuggling up under blankets. And he was like, oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> like, yeah. I hate the heat. I love sun cold sucks. days. <laughs> and I was like, all right, there's yeah. something to this guy. I think it was like the weather, like obviously our love of fashion was a big one. We yeah. both talked about how we, you know, really like to have a unique sense of style. And, um, and I think those were like the two main ones that I can remember being. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, we at least have that in common. Something that's like two things that are, you know, not the norm. Most people like the sun. Most people don't dress the way we do, obviously. Yeah. So I think those were two big ones for us. We just kept talking. This was, we met online around May of 2013. So we 
talked on Facebook. We had a few video chat dates. Quick funny story is the first time we uh, had a video date. We had arranged to meet at 7 at 7 p.m. You know, we'd Skype each other at 7 p.m. And uh, it's the same time zone, just for the record. I had, I had a moment, right? So he's in BC, I'm in Portland, West Coast. We had already been on the call like five minutes talking and I just stopped and I was like, wait, what time is it there? <laughs> Like, same time as you. <laughs> Without visiting a beach, we I both signed like, on at seven o'clock. <laughs> I should have just signed off there. Yeah, that should have been your sign. You just yeah. walk, walk <laughs> away. Back to the main story. So I had a few virtual dates, and we decided, you know, well, this is going really well. We really we're getting along. We should probably meet in person. I wanted to come visit him up in Canada first for a few reasons, but the main one being that I had never really gotten a chance to leave like the West Coast. I thought it'd be really cool to go to Canada to meet his family first and I had lived in an apartment uh, with my roommate so I didn't really have any room for him to come stay with me mm -hmm. so it made more sense that I came up and visit because his family had some space that I could stay in. I got a little opposition from some people around me, I won't name any names or call anybody out but there were definitely people in my life that thought I was, for lack of a better term, insane for wanting to go meet somebody in their words halfway across the country. Yeah, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I met online, and I understand, you know, this was... Back then, online wasn't quite the norm. It wasn't It was, quite. like, emerging, but not like it is now, right? So people still have that mindset of, yeah. uh, like, the whole catfish thing or whatever. Right. Or you this is pre-Tinder days, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Pre-Tinder. And it's, like, obviously, we know, like, we talked in person. Yeah, video, video and on the not, phone. And... It's not like we just saw photos of each other, like, what's well, it's me. No, we talked more for... It was about, we talked for, like, two to three months before we yeah. started. Yeah. Before we decided to actually meet in person. To me, it was like, why am I crazy for doing this? And some of you guys might know we're pretty honest about it. Like, we're both Christians, and so it's something that I just prayed about. When people around you are all kind of saying something, but you feel differently, you kind of start to question your own intuition about stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I remember just praying and asking, hey, if I'm supposed to go meet this guy, if this is meant to be, you know, please just make it make it really obvious, you know, show me a sign. And so one of the ways that uh, I've learned to kind of listen to what he has to say is that he'll tell me something, the same thing, but m multiple times from multiple different people. And so and this is a few, I think a few weeks before I want to come visit Trevor Hillsong was in town and they did a concert. And in the middle of the concert, one of the uh, main guys got up and he just stopped in the middle of the song. And he said, you know, I just need to tell you because I know somebody out there tonight needs to hear this, that People around you might think you're crazy for doing something that you want to do in your life. They might think that you've completely lost your mind and that you have no idea what you're doing, but it's between you and God. And if you know God's called you to do this, then you have to do it regardless of what people think. And I just kind of sat there in shock. And then I kind of heard the same thing again from some other people that didn't know the situation, but had just said it out of the blue. They didn't know what was going on, right? So to hear it more than once, I was like, okay, I'm not, crazy, I'm not losing my mind, I've got to go do this. And so I came up here for about a week. At the end of June, early July of that same year, I flew up to Bellingham, which is a tiny city just right across the border from BC, and Trevor drove down and picked me up at the airport there. Yeah. And it's this tiny, like, pack of gum airport. Oh, yeah, so small. Like, one hallway. It's super tiny, right? And so <laughs> I get off the plane, and turn the corner, and I come out of the terminal. Oh man, and he's sitting there in a chair. He stands up and he walks over and he hands me a bag of gummies, of candy, <laughs> of all my favorite candies. And I think I told him that I like green and red Swedish fish, but I don't like the orange and yellow. And he had picked out just green and red and had them in a bag for me. <laughs> he has yeah, some other stuff. Yeah, some other candy. And he hands me his bag of candy and hold, like takes my hand and we get my bag and we walk out to his car. I was so nervous, I don't think I said anything, which, as you guys know, is not normal for me. <laughs> not normal at all. <laughs> and so we drove back, and I just sat there quietly in the car, and... And we went out to dinner that night. Yeah. I showed you around Vancouver, and we, there was like, a, she was here for Canada Day, so there was like a big celebration downtown. We went downtown for some fireworks and all that stuff, and then we, I think we officially started dating when you visited at the time. Yeah, you officially asked me out, because I remember you said, I'm not gonna ask you to be my girlfriend, on a video chat, like that's lame. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he's very chivalrous, very, very gentlemanly. So yeah, he asked me out when I was visiting and of course I said yes. And it was really hard to go back home after that though. Yeah. I actually had a breakdown <laughs> the day I had to leave, but it's okay. I went back home and we kind of continued having a bit of a long distance relationship Took before we would take every two to three weekends. I would take off because I worked weekends and come up and visit or he'd come and visit me. So. Yeah, I mean, halfway we went to Tacoma one time. Yeah. And figure out a spot we meet. Kind yeah, of. and so I, I graduated college that that summer, and we just really felt like you know if we really want to give this a chance, if we really want to be a couple, we can't be 300 miles apart. Yeah. So luckily, I was at a point in my life where I could have either gone to like graduate school or I could have gotten a job just to pay the bills. And so I decided, you know what, I'll just move to Bellingham. I'll just move to the small city that's about, you know, 30 minutes away from yeah. his house across the border. And so I packed up my bags and I yeah, came I up. I flew down and we helped pack up your car and we drove back here together. 